Hey guys, what's up? This video is brought to you by Linode. If you guys are looking to set up your own server, I recommend this company because they're very easy to use and they save me a lot of money. As you can see in this demo here, you have all kinds of different flavors of Linux that you can choose to install on the server. You can set up where you want your server to be located. They're located all throughout the world at this point. So find a data center that's close to you and set it up. You can also have dedicated CPU plans for any sort of high-end processing, or if it's just basic web development or even just exploratory, they have $5 a month plans. So make sure you guys check them out. The link is in the description tab below. Hey guys, so I found this funny tweet today and I think it's, it's very true from my experience of doing this for 10 years. And he says, if you're a new programmer, I just want you to know me and all my colleagues with years of experience Google the most basic things daily. And, uh, and that's, that's extremely true. I remember one time I was working with a guy who was like, I mean, this dude, it was like involved in all kinds of different, like react redux, like JavaScript node. I mean, he, he had a lot of C sharp experience and I, I worked with him. I'm not even going to say, it cause I feel like it'll call him out. But basically this dude was like considered the go-to guy, um, in the company. And he like kind of keeps the lights on in a $20 billion company. And, uh, and he works all the time. He was a workaholic, but he's involved in so many different facets and so many different things. I remember at, I, I, I'm trying to well, specifically what he was looking up. It was something as basic as like mapping over an array of objects or something like that uh, within JavaScript. And I had seen the code that this guy writes. I'd seen his genius when he reviews other people's code. Like if anybody was ever stuck, like this dude could come over and look at it. And he was just like a, like a calculator. So like really, really smart guy, one of the smartest I've ever worked with. And, uh, and he was looking up something as basic as mapping out uh, an array of objects in JavaScript. And for a moment, I, I thought, hold on a second, like, how could that be? Like, this dude's like way too good for that. But I think it was more to do with the fact that it was like that he like he, he probably didn't really remember 100%. And even if he thinks he did, he's going to save himself time by just simply writing the question out in Google, getting the answer on Stack Overflow, seeing how they do it, and then kind of reminding themselves, oh, that's how I do it. You're going to forget all the time, and you just simply have to look up how to do something. Perl was a famous programming language in the 90s and late 2000s, and Perl had um, what was called like the, the Perl book, or they called it the Camel book because it was an O'Reilly book, but with Perl, like, you never knew how to, to do anything, really. Like, you always had to look up everything. And for that reason, all the Perl programmers, they used, they, they had this library book on hand, which is called the, uh, the Camel book. So that's where the Camel and Perl kind of got uh, intertwined together. But like you could not program in Perl without this book handy because we didn't have the internet really back then. And um, even though we did have sites like Perl Monks and all that stuff, it was almost like finding a needle in the haystack. And especially if you were looking up something basic about the language, it was almost impossible to find an answer, you know, specifically for that one basic problem that you have. And these days, like, it's much easier. But I think my, my point is, like, it, it's not rocket science. And, like, these people aren't as smart as you think that they are. And we do look up stuff all the time. And sometimes it's just simply out of habit because it's like, oh, I might know how to do that, but I'm still going to look it up because it's going to save me time versus trying to fumble around and fuck with it and, like, you know, and, and then find out I don't remember how to do it. Uh, or you just, you know, simply look up something, and you just start plugging away. So I just think it's a, it's a pretty true tweet. Like, we don't necessarily forget how to map over arrays of objects in JavaScript, but that is like a small example of, of certain things that like even an experienced programmer could find themselves looking up. Another thing that I think I want to mention along the same lines is like when we see in projects, some of us can get down on ourselves and we're like, oh, I haven't created some sort of project that I'm proud of, uh, something meaningful that the world is using. I haven't created the next Facebook. And I think we set this uh, this kind of crazy bar upon ourselves. And sometimes when we're learning, we're, we think like somehow all of that's just going to have to come together. And what I've always said is you want to build projects. And here is a project called uh, Acceladraw. And this is something that Dan Abramoff, uh, the creator of Redux, who works at Facebook, is big, a uh, big React developer over there. Um, he was like basically touting this project is really cool for building uh, UML diagrams, and it's like a hand-drawn type of thing. So you can see I can uh, give it a stroke color if I fill it. 
it has like this hand drawn type of look so you can you know create i think unique type of uh uml diagrams and it's it's pretty cool right and you, you look at a project like this and you're like hmm like how how in the hell did they do this it's all obviously javascript and canvas a you know api probably and I mean, who really knows unless we look at the code, but it, it's, it's impressive. And you're like, how could one person actually do this? But it turns out not one person actually did it. So if we look at the actual project on GitHub, and this is what's so great about modern day code. And once you understand how these projects are put together, you can dissect them and then figure out, oh, wow, all these big projects that I thought were, you know, completely unique or just a bunch of patched together things, especially in the web. So we look at this and... Like I say, you got the testimonials on here of Dan Abramoff himself. And uh, we look at this, uh, we look at the the license here. So we take a look, it's MIT, but 2020, Acceladraw of copyright owns it. So you would think, oh, whoever created this Acceladraw clearly did all this stuff from scratch. We look at the, contr uh, the contributors. This has a fairly, I think, healthy level of contributors, which is pretty cool. So um, normally you see a project and there's like literally six at the most. Uh, in many cases, it's just one. Uh, and then sometimes if you're lucky, there's two. But in, like even in React, there's like six core developers. And then like even though there's thousands of contributors, like the six people basically run the entire show. But you can see this has uh, a much better spread in my opinion. But anyway, you can look at this and you're like, okay, so clearly one person didn't create all this. And if we go back to the code, if you understand how these modern day um, node packages uh, or really node projects are put together, you look at the package.json. And you can see that the actual dependencies that, that is what keeps the lights on for this project. So this project will not run without these dependencies. And then you also have developer dependencies, which are all the dependencies that they're using just simply to help them write the code. And it's only used by, by the developers. And then they probably have some peer dependencies in here, um, which they do not. But anyway, so if we focus on the actual dependencies here, you can see hmm, what is all this stuff? Like, obviously, they're using React and React DOM, and that's how they're actually creating uh, the UI. So they have some sort of component-based model. But here's Rough.js. So if I look at this, and I'm like, let's go ahead and, and search Google for that. You pull this up, and huh, that, that looks pretty familiar, doesn't it? So clearly, the people that put this project together did not, in my opinion, write the actual core. Like, the coolest-looking thing of this is simply the shapes and how they're filled in. So you're like, wow, that, you know, that's, uh, that's a big core part of the project, these hand-drawn things. And like you would think Acceladraw had done it themselves, but they clearly didn't. They used a project that was already out there called Rough.js. Now, if we look at Rough.js, you have all these different, uh, uh, these different shapes that we saw, and um, clearly it looks a little bit more sophisticated than even what we saw with Acceladraw, because Acceladraw is only limiting you to a few shapes that are, that are associated with UML diagrams. But then we look down here and we're like, um, algorithm to convert SVG arcs to canvas described here was adapted from Mozilla code base. So you click on that and you see that this particular Mozilla code base was actually how they do their curvatures and things. Um, and then um, the core algorithm for drawing the lines and ellipsis outlines were adapted from Handy. So if we look at Handy, this is actually how they're creating the shapes. They're using this project. So it goes on and on down the line. You would think that Acceladraw is just simply using Rough.js, but we can see Rough.js also has its own set of dependencies that were all like stitched together and put into a Rough.js project, which was then stitched together and put into an Acceladraw project created by a bunch of different developers, but none of this shit was actually written from hand. Not like officially. The point I'm simply trying to make here is that programming is not as difficult as what the end game seems to suggest and what we what we see. You look at what Facebook was when it first got started, it was using PHP. There were other better better programming languages to use at that point. I mean, Java had been around for a long time. Uh, dot, .NET with C Sharp had been around for a long time. He used PHP because he could hack stuff together in PHP very well. So it doesn't really matter what you use. Um, it matters how you build the project. There's other things in here, too, that they're using. So, like, even for, um, like, Nanoid. I don't even know what Nanoid is. Let's look at Nanoid. Yeah, Nanoid. Uh, this is a, basically, we used to use a project called uh, UUID in Node, and it was, like, the de facto way of uh, building unique uh, IDs, you know, these new, new uh, unique values. And behind the scenes, they're really using, like, things like date timestamps and stuff. 
uh, base 64 encoding in many cases. But you can see that this thing, um, this new project is like, it's all about, hey, it's more compact than UUID. It's also 16% faster, which really doesn't mean a whole lot because you're generating this stuff mostly um, on the development side. And even if it's like a production level thing, like 16% faster on two small libraries is probably very, very insignificant. But clearly this guy is a new kid on the block. And whatever both of those projects consist of, whether it's UUID or NanoID uh, or Nanoid, um, they're probably using similar dependencies as well. So my point being is that when you guys build projects, that's when you start to become a better developer. You start to see how all these projects are actually stitched together. You don't want to reinvent the wheel. There's a, a phrase in programming called keep it simple, stupid. So if there's a library or something out there that's already doing what you need to do, you don't have time to write that from scratch. Find that library, figure out how its API works, and then shove that thing into your project. And then as you start building your project, like all the different facets of programming start to come into play. And really like when you start looking at jobs and they're like, oh, I need this, 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 and this, and this. And at the very least, even if you're not gonna be a master at any one of those things, because we rarely are, you at least know how to talk to the interviewer um, about some project you did that uses that technology. And you're gonna be able to have a um, intelligent conversation with that person. And in many cases, it's that endeavor, uh, it's that little bit of experience. And, um, and that's really what they're looking for. You know, they're looking for uh, a basic set of, uh, of, you know, sophistication there. So you guys don't have to master any sort of syntax for really any sort of language. Um, if you're going to be using Python or JavaScript or C sharp or PHP or Ruby or Perl, they're all C based languages. Um, they're all written in a similar way. Some of them have small nuances here and there. You just Google that stuff, man. So Anyway, guys, that's my video. Uh, make sure you guys subscribe. I appreciate all the support and have a good night. Bye.